Isaiah chapter 9. You know, I haven't been as disciplined in my health as I need to be. I've been running a lot. I've been battling with a disc issue in my back, and it's really hitting me over these last few weeks. So if you would keep that in your prayers, I'm not above asking for prayer. Also, I'm asking that you guys will pray with me as I ask the Lord to give me further necessary discipline for my diet and exercise so that I can kill diabetes in my body. For, for, for this type of diabetes, diet, exercise, and discipline are factors in, in making it bow down. And so again, I don't talk to you all without speaking to me first. Keep me in your prayers. Cover my wife too, and she needs rest. And I'm praying that over your family as well. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Check that out. You can have a government and peace. Here we go with the messianic reference. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, from the time that this individual shows up, even forevermore. For, so from the moment whoever this prophecy is declaring, from that moment a new government, a new structure, a new order will be in authority and their authority will never be diminished. He will all, Once on the throne, he'll always be on the throne. He can't be voted out because he wasn't voted in. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Now go to Romans chapter 12, starting at the first verse. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, Romans 12, starting at the first verse, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given to me, everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Everybody's on a different faith journey. Stop judging people based on your faith journey. Stop trying to get people saved when you got saved, how you got saved, where you got saved. Stop beating people up because they don't know the scriptures you know. They haven't walked out the life you've walked out. You're judging them, but you had two parents saved, praying over you, putting oil on your forehead. They just walked in, been sexually abused for 15 years, and don't know up from down. Don't even know if church is real. Don't trust people. Don't trust God. Don't trust church because they told somebody in church that they were being abused, and they said, Jesus will so fix it, but then didn't call the police. Stop judging people because you don't know their story. Everybody has a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you would present your bodies a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. A sacrifice dies, but he wants you to be a living dead thing. A living dead thing. He wants you to live, but he wants you to die. He wants you to die, but he wants you to live. So it's kind of confusing. Do you want me to live while dying or die while living? Which one is it, God? And he says, yeah. Well, which one? Yeah, both. But I don't get it. Well, Jesus was a dead man walking, but he was also life dying, so that which was dead could live again. And during this Christmas season, I want us to refocus 
and reframe the narrative of these next few weeks and reconfigure our mindset around the unbelievable, eternally critical, glorious gift that was given to us by God the Father in the form of Yeshua HaMashiach, this child that was born. Because if you focus in on what you can give from your substance to other people, those gifts don't have life connected. You're just exchanging things, but you don't have the meaning behind the season connected, and therefore, your gifts will turn into the title of this message, which is Dead Giveaway. <laughs> Tell somebody, Dead Giveaway. <laughs> the scripture in Isaiah speaks about the Messiah. Isaiah 9 is important, but it is doubly important when you understand where and when Isaiah got this prophetic revelation. Three chapters earlier, Isaiah said something like this, and correct me if I'm wrong, Pastor Darius, but he says, in the year King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord high and lifted up. The train of his robe filled the temple. Am I correct? Uzziah was a good king for the most part, and there was a fear in the kingdom that there was going to be an absence of godly leadership over the people of God. And so people are wondering, where's the godly leadership? Where is somebody that we can trust? Where is somebody that we can put our hope in? And the father speaks to Isaiah three chapters later and says, tell these people stop looking to man. We have put so much stock in our political system and in, into our social systems and into the need to be validated by external people. You're fishing for likes on social media. Those people don't know you, and I've learned like never before. All they need is one thing, and they'll turn it into the entirety of your life. The government will be upon his shoulder. I love that. It didn't say shoulders because the Messiah is so powerful. He can take the governments of this world and all of their systems and plotting and planning, and he can put that on one shoulder while he's got the salvation of all the souls of everybody that's ever been born on the other shoulder. Tell somebody he can handle it. During this Christmas season, we need to reframe and get back to the main thing, and that's Jesus Christ. But not Jesus from TV and not Jesus from the movies, but Jesus from Scripture. Jesus has prophesied in Isaiah 9. Who is he? He's wonderful. He's a counselor. He's a mighty God. He's an everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. How are you going to be the father and the prince? How are you going to be the father and the son? But then you got the counselor. So you got the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost in the... Dead giveaway, reframing from the giving of physical gifts, irrespective and exclusive or disconnected from the reality of the lordship of Jesus Christ. So many people running around trying to please people this year over the next two weeks. You have given yourself ulcers trying to figure out how to get everybody on that list a gift. And you don't want to be embarrassed. And they not even studying you. And as soon as you give it, they're going to forget. And they don't care what debt you get in to do it. And so you're doing all that when we need to be focused on the gift that was given to us in the first place. I wish I had some church folk, some Christians. What I've learned, elders, is that there are many church attendees, but very few disciples. Because church attendance is convenient. And when you say something offensive, I'm not coming anymore. But the truth is we need to take the myth out of this Christmas season because we have mixed the sacred with the secular. We have mixed the unholy with the holy. And Jesus is utterly holy. What the Father did literally put hell on its back and brought heaven into earth. And we need to... Think about the awesome sacrifice that the Father gave, a gift that can never be paid for. This is a living 
sacrifice. Romans 12 is just the echo of what the father did through his son. He's saying, be like Jesus, be a living sacrifice. Jesus knew that he was living to die, knowing he was going to live again. I'll, ha I'll just preach to myself until I, until I feel the breakthrough. But the Bible says, unto us a child is born. Hear that, baby? Love that baby. That baby doesn't know who I am, doesn't care who I am. Probably sitting on mommy's lap. All that baby knows is when I cry, mommy feeds me. When I'm wet, mommy changes me. When I'm hurting, mommy comforts me. Daddy comforts me. A child being born is symbolic of hope, possibilities, potential, and legacy. Did you hear what I said? Because when my children were born, when I looked at them, I said, they're going to be better than me. They're going to they're gonna go further than me. They're not going to have the same fears that I had. They're going to be delivered from that. They're, they're not going to have those same issues. And, and as best as I can, I'm going to give them the best opportunities to have a great education. And, and I'm going to even take them on vacation. Me and my mom, we didn't, she didn't have a lot of money as a single mother. We didn't get a chance to go on vacation. We went on church trips every now and then. One time we went to Niagara Falls on a tour bus, on a Greyhound bus. Oh, yes, we did with the church. And, and that was fun. It was 12 hours of fun on the bus. Amen. <laughs> we went to Niagara Falls, and then we went to a church that Sunday morning in uh, Buffalo, New York. I think it was Buffalo. Ro no, Rochester. It was Rochester. And, and, and we sang. And I remember that trip because my mother paid for us to have this beautiful room, and we saw the waterfall and all of that. And, and, and we didn't go on vacation because we didn't have vacation money. And I'm not saying that to ask for sympathy, but my point is something as simple as taking my kids to Disneyland is a marker that says, now I've done something that didn't happen for me. My father didn't do this, so now my kids have something they can build on. <laughs> Children bring potential legacy and possibilities. Scripture said, unto us a child is born, but a son is given. It didn't say the child was given because you don't sacrifice a child. Stop sacrificing your children at the altar of your identity and at the altar of your career goals and at the altar of your brokenness. We sacrifice our children to try to get acclaim or applause or money. And so we end up sacrificing their childhood, chasing dreams that have long since passed us by. And if you realize the revelation that God wants to outdo himself in your children, you start investing in them and not in pipe dreams. I need some help in here this morning. I just need y'all to pray me through. The Bible says a child is born, but a son is given. The Bible says in Luke 2.52 that Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. And so before he could be sacrificed on the cross, he had to walk through process. Tell somebody, go through it. No, you didn't say it like you mean it. Tell somebody, go through it. Everybody wants the easy Jesus, but there is no easy Jesus. You better read this New Testament. He was lonely. He was hurting. He wanted to give up in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was lied on, talked about. They slapped him silly. And then when they accused him and he could have defended himself, the Bible says he opened not his mouth. I know some of y'all watching right now. What you going to say? I'm waiting on you to say it. Here's what you've been waiting on. <gasps> because it doesn't matter what you say. They've already made up their mind. And they made up their mind while you were doing good. They just didn't say anything. They were just waiting. Okay. All right. All right. You can't convince people to change who have made the commitment to misunderstand you. Tell somebody, focus. I've heard people, yeah, I ain't going to church. That's, uh -huh, that's why I don't go to church. No, I'm not why you don't go to church. You don't go to church because you don't believe the word. That's why you don't go to church. You just want to use me as an excuse. Don't go to hell because of me. You better, you better get it right with Jesus. I ain't Jesus. But you better get it right with him.
There's a lot of people in here like me. Most of my hurt came from church folk, but I didn't let them stop me from getting to Jesus. I dare you to tell somebody, I'm not letting anything stop me from getting to Jesus. I've endured more pain and backstabbing from saved folk. And I will never put that on Jesus. Because that wasn't Jesus, that was people. A child is born, but a son is given. So we talking about Christmas. I need us to tell these kids the truth. Because some kids are still waiting on a nice man to come down the chimney and bring them gifts, and y'all ain't even got a chimney. What he had to do, like, ho, 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 ho. Ding dong. I'm not here to mess up people's mythology, but for Christ followers, we need to stop mixing mythology with theology. Because one day they're going to say, didn't you tell me Santa was real? Now you're telling me Jesus is real? Stop sacrificing your children at the altar of social expediency. You don't want to ruffle feathers. You don't want people to think you're weird. You are weird. You believe in people walking on water. You believe that Jesus died and rose up again. You believe in healing and miracles and signs and wonders. And now you want to be normal? Now you want to be accepted? They don't like you. They never liked you. So you might as well stay weird, stay crazy, stay believing. And stay holy. I need a 10 second praise break in the balcony. In the balcony. And on the floor. And online. Where the rock? Tell, say the name Jesus. Say the name Jesus. Jesus. Say it again, please. Jesus. Jesus Christ, the unique Son of God, the gift of God, Jesus. There we go. I love that. Where's my homegirl in the back? Do it again. There we go. When she say it, she say it like she mean it. She say it like she knows how to call him when you're going through something. When you say it like that, you don't care what the person next to you thinks. I want a church that'll say the name of Jesus and say it like you're desperate. Say it like his name matters. Say it. Say it again. Say it in the balcony. Say it on the floor. Say it at your house. Say the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every niche and every tongue that every every niche I need some worshipers in here. to lift up the name that is above every name. Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What's his name? Oh, what's his name? Watching, we might as well give them the name that can help them. Jesus. 
We need to tell the truth about Jesus. Teach our kids the Bible. I've seen so many nativity scenes. They're beautiful, but they're slightly off. We got the light-skinned baby in the hay. The blonde-haired mom, Middle Eastern Jews. Then we got camels and wise men in the manger. The scripture makes it clear that the wise man didn't show up till he was about two years old. Stop doing tradition that's not rooted in truth. Let's get it right so we don't get left. We sit here and we don't know what we're doing or why. And I've had to examine myself some of the traditions that we do in church around Jesus. Why don't you ask Jesus into your heart? Where does it say that? It doesn't say that. It says, repent and be baptized. It says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. People are like, I got saved. Did you? How you know? Well, they asked me if I wanted Jesus. Did they tell you about it? No, but I got saved. You can't get saved until there's the effective preaching of the gospel. If nobody told you that there's sin and you and I are sinners, you haven't heard the gospel. And you won't know to get saved until the Holy Spirit convicts you. Because the Bible says no one calls him Lord unless the Holy Spirit prompts him to. We need a move of the Holy Ghost in church. We got too much religion and not enough Holy Ghost. That's why people think they saved and can still do whatever they want. You saved and you still cussing people out? You saved and you still got time to judge me? You saved and you still telling me I'm going to hell for, because of something I have? You saved, but you can sin as much as you want. Shall we, so, that, so now we peddle in cheap grace. I can do what I want because I'm saved. That's a lie. That's a devil. Shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? Certainly not. When you get saved, you don't want to sin no more because you love him and you know what he took you from. Is there anybody grateful for salvation? We got so much dead religion mixed in with the truth so we have pockets of breakthrough but the breakthrough is an interruption to our regularly scheduled dead lives there's no consistency in our prayer life no consistency in our word life so every time we give something is half life and half death you believe God but you still check the horoscope You believe him for provision, but you still play the lottery. Tell somebody, dead giveaway. I feel God in here. Brent, it's time for a gift exchange. Tell somebody, gift exchange. We just had a holiday, a Christmas gathering for our staff, and we had a gift exchange. And there was a certain amount of money that they had to buy a gift that was wrapped. And when you, they called your number, you got the gift and you unwrapped it. And if, you know, you liked it, you get to keep it. Or if somebody else's gift, uh, if, if, if you like their gift better, you could trade them. <laughs> and that's fun, except if you really wanted your gift. <laughs> One person got the best gift. They got like a $50 gift card to the movies with some peanut M&Ms. And some Snickers. I said, I know that's Jesus. I know, I know that's the Lord. <laughs> My wife got a blanket. She was so excited. I got a blanket. I was like, ain't nobody want to trade with you. You're the only one that want that blanket. <laughs> Where's Pastor Chris? Pastor Chris, what did you get? He got a $50 Visa gift card. And then where's uh, Pastor Jacob? Where's Jacob? 
Uh-huh. Not at church. Praise the Lord. Uh-huh. Note that, Pastor Travis. <laughs> anyway, you had 10 seconds to trade the gift if you like the other person's gift. So Jacob, who works at Imagine uh, Fitness, he liked Pastor Chris's gift. Pastor Chris, I'm going to be Jacob and you're going to be you. He had 10 seconds to trade, and this is what happened. <laughs> Pastor Chris ran for 10 seconds because he knew if he could just stay running long enough, time would run out and he'd be able to keep his gift. The devil wants you to stay still so he can trade his mess for your gift. And you can't stay still in this season. Some of y'all need to get out of that seat and you need, you need to run until you know the devil has no more time left on the clock. I need you to run like your gift matters. I need you to run like your freedom is on the line. I need you to run like your family is getting free. Get out of that seat and run! I need about 20 more runners. On your mark. Get set. Run. to run for them. Every now and then, Pastor Trevor, when you my size, you need a runner. Byron, you and Josh, get your Michael Jackson jacket and get to running. Go, and Brandon, you go with him. And you running for your kids. Darius, you got calf muscles. Demarcus, I dare you to run like you're right at the finish line. Because here's what's happening. What's been chasing you, you're about to chase it. I don't run from devils. Devils run from me. Run from devils, and devils run from me. change and exchange your gift for theirs, I dare you to say dead giveaway. They want your anointing. Dead giveaway. You can't have my gift. You can't have my anointing. There are some people that hate themselves so much, they don't just want to be around you, they want to be you. 
They imagine themselves in your life with your spouse and your kids. They created an entire scenario. They don't just want to be around you. They want to be you. Dead giveaway. I'm, I'm declaring right now the anointing of dead giveaway eyes. Well, you'll see everybody who's around you that means you no good. Tell somebody dead giveaway. Just say it out loud. I want the Lord to show me who everybody is before December 31st, 2018. But Pastor Robert, the other part of dead giveaway, and it blesses me that your wife, who the doctors are saying have this arthritis and all that, she's standing up the whole service. That's, that's blessing my life. That, and she just had surgery, and she's standing up. Oh, I feel a breakthrough. There's miracles in here. And I'm almost done, too. I've gone through much and far too much to sell my birthright for some stew. The Bible says each one of us has been given a measure of faith. Each one of us has a gift. I'm not going to covet your gift at the expense of my own. There are some people that want a gift exchange. They want your gift instead of their own. What they're saying is they don't like how God made them. I want that gift. I want that platform. I want that anointing. And while you're going after theirs, yours has gone missing. But if you'd ever embrace who God created you to be, you'd walk in a place of authority that no devil in hell could overtake. What I believe this Christmas season, Josh, is meant to show us is the inherent eternal value in every human being around us. The greatest gift we could learn is to see that every person you'll ever see has the same value to God as you do. No one claps for that. Let me tell you why. Because the moment I see you as equal to me, I can't judge you anymore. The moment I see you equal as me, I can't be prejudiced. The moment I see you as equal to me, I can't talk about you as bad. Because I know where I was when the blood found me. See, if I see you equal as me, I'm not going to tear you up on social media behind a private page. The moment I see you as valuable and equal to me, even if I see you doing something wrong, the Bible says, restore such a one in love, considering yourself. I want to pastor a church that honors the humanity and the gift of every human being. You don't get to invalidate somebody's gift because they're not walking out their path like you. I'm the pastor, and I get to determine that whoever walks through those doors, if they're serious about learning more about God, they can be in here. As long as they ain't disrupting and acting crazy and doing nothing illegal, you let them in. You don't judge them because of what they look like or who they walked in with or what they smell like or none of that. Because the gift of God, the child that was born, was given to every broken individual. None of us deserve Jesus. None of us deserve the blood. None of us deserve to go to heaven. None of us deserve healing. None of us deserve deliverance. But the child was born and the son was given. A dead giveaway. He said, it is finished. And he gave up his spirit. A dead giveaway. And he died so you and I can live. And you think I'm going to let people who don't like me stop me from preaching the gospel? And here's the thing about a living sacrifice. Since I'm dead, I don't feel no pain anyway. Because it's no longer me who lives, but Christ in me. For when he died, I died. So I know you're trying to kill me, but I'm already dead. They try to kill me with their words, Pastor Darius. I'm already dead. And they wanted a response. There's some people right now, they videotaping the whole service. They don't care nothing about what I'm saying. They waiting on me to talk about it. So I'm going to talk about it right now. You ready?